The following contest is a second round match in the Kings of Consoles tournament to determine the greatest game in the history of the Nintendo Entertainment System. Two games enter, only one can advance. Introducing first, the 57th Seat, a 1987 racing game from Square Rad Racer. And its opponent, the 8th Seat, a 1989 role playing game from Chunsoft. Dragon Warrior! Your ringside judges are Ricky Giraldo and Pat Doom. There's nothing left to say but round two, fight! <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 48 of Kings of Consoles. This is the podcast where we're trying to find the best game for each home video game console by means of giant tournaments. Uh, This is our 12th second round matchup in our Nintendo Entertainment System tournament, uh, where we are going to see the number eight overall seed, Dragon Warrior, as it takes on number 57, Rad Racer. I'm Pat Dooley. I'm Ricky Geraldo. And we are in week two of what wound up being a sort of accidental three-week run of JRPGs. Uh, We just saw Final Fantasy advance last week. uh, And now we're seeing the other iconic... I mean, there are basically two iconic JRPG franchises that go back to the 8-bit era. Final Fantasy and Dragon Warrior slash Dragon Quest. It's the JRPGs. Like, the premier JRPGs. Yeah. I mean, there have been new series that have come along since then, but when you think about the, like, you know, biggest cultural footprint, it's these two series. Uh, But, as we always do, we always start talking about the underdog, which in this case is the number 57 seed based on IGN's list of 100 best games for the NES. Uh, Rad Racer is a 1987 racing game from Square. Uh, it beat Ikari Warriors in episode 18, 30 weeks ago. Uh, I was not a huge fan of this game 30 weeks ago, uh, back in July when we played it the last time. And I was arguably less of a fan this time. I'm curious <laughs> if, your, uh, if your opinion changed since you beat it back in July. Yeah, so I, I, I definitely uh, think that the game is not as good as when I first played it. I think when we first played it, we were in a different mindset, different <laughs> mindset since we were both in lockdown. Uh, so I think I was more eager to play a brand new game and especially uh, an NES. At that time, we were like, playing a whole bunch of old games that we never played before. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of those early games were, you know, the lower seeds or, you know, kind of the ones seed, that yeah. you just weren't on our radars when we started. But yeah, it's definitely not as good as the first time we played it. <laughs> uh, it's, but I, and I do think, you know, based on our, you know, pre-recording conversation, um, it's still a really pretty game. And we yeah. both agree that it's one of the best looking games we've played, even all these weeks later. It's really, the yeah. graphics are really, really good for 1987. Yeah, like the city, uh, the city level, like the city at night looks mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a beautiful game for the NES. And think about it, the NES doing graphics like these, like this one is kind of insane. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a Genesis game or a Super Nintendo game. Um, yep. And I was, you know, we were, uh, I, I compared it earlier to uh, Castlevania 3, uh, which I do think has better graphics, but it also came along later um, and is, I mean, unquestionably a better game. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, I will say the main thing that Rad Racer has going for it is how good it looks. Um, the controls aren't as good as it looks. The music isn't as good as it looks, um, even though the music is done by uh, Uematsu, the same guy that did the music for Final Fantasy. Uh, this is not his finest work. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. I just, honestly, I don't have a ton to talk about with this one other than um, I just I didn't like it. <laughs> I almost quit playing with about 10 minutes left uh, just because I just I, I had been I had spun out again and got sent back to the very beginning of the very first track again. And I was just kind of over it, but I haven't given up on a game yet through 47 weeks and now one game and I'm not about to start. Yeah, you're better than me because I definitely gave up our second week. <laughs> I was like, I can't play. Uh, what's that game? Kicks. Uh, kicks. Oh God, I couldn't do it. Uh-huh. I was like, is this is this podcast really a good idea? I, I don't know. <laughs> it seemed like, but, like when we played Adventures of Lolo three and Duck Hunt week one, it's like, all right, this is gonna be fun. And then yeah, we had that run where uh, we played Kicks and then Ice Climber and then Ice Hockey back to back to back weeks. Whew. I mean, I, yeah, it was oof. it was a big oof. <laughs> yeah, but well, here we are. Here we are, forty-eight weeks later. Now we're playing the good stuff. Yeah, so and let's we talk about Dragon Warrior, to, like, <laughs> Super Marchio. Yeah, Dragon Warrior. Or I would Dragon much rather Warrior. talk about a nineteen eighty-nine <laughs> role-playing game from Chunsoft. Uh, the player character sets out on a quest to rescue Princess Gwalin, who was taken by a dragon. Hence the Dragon Quest. Along the way, you come across a tablet that tells you of your destiny to defeat the Dragon Lord and reclaim the Ball of Light, which will destroy all the monsters in the Kingdom of Alephgard. That inspired 10 sequels and several spin-offs. Um, and Ricky, you probably know this, well, you certainly know this better than I, I do because you've played more of the more recent Dragon Quests. Um, mm-hmm. d- is this like Final Fantasy where they like share traits, but they're not actually sequels? Like right. Does Dragon Warrior Eleven have it, or Dragon Quest Eleven have anything to do with this game? It does not. Okay. I, the only thing it, I think the only thing that matters is you. They, it's kind of like uh, Zelda, where Link is always the warrior of time or whatever mm-hmm. he is. Yeah. Same with Dragon Warrior. Like he's there's always the main character is always like the chosen of whatever. Okay. Are they but, always yeah, the, like a descendant of what's his face? The guy that yeah, they're the, like the a descendant. The Erdrick. Right. Yes. Yep. They're yeah. always a descendant of that clan or whatever the okay. tribe. So it's kind of like the yeah. like the Belmonts in Castlevania, where it's not always Simon, but right. It, it, yeah. It's yeah. It's a Belmont. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and, and the characters never have a name because you, you. I mean, they do have a name. Actually, no, I don't think they have a name. Is it always? Does it always give you the option to name yourself? It always, yeah, it always gives you the option. But it's not like Final Fantasy where like Cloud is the name that you're supposed to be, but you could always change it. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. I think There's this like one default. is. Yeah. Yeah, this one is always no. Nah, you put your name or whatever name you want. Nice. Or you do like I do, and you make your party the two of us and my wife and your girlfriend. And then yeah. get emotionally attached, yeah, and when much. everybody dies twelve minutes in, you get depressed. Um, <laughs> That's why I tend to not do that, but I yeah. used to do that. Actually, no, I, I'm sorry, I take that back. That was Final Fantasy last week when uh, yeah. when we had the party, like the four, warrior, and we so. died right away. Yeah, <laughs> I was the fighter. You were the black belt, and then uh, Malia and Sheila were our mages. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. Huh. I thought so. So, so yeah, man. What'd you think of uh, Dragon Warrior? I liked it. Or Dragon Quest. I I liked it. I, I liked when we played three and four in the first round, uh, and we're playing four again next week. Um, those are I like those better. Um, yeah. I feel like because they kind of you know build on the kind of the foundation of what this game was. Um, I do like the kind of the faux old English, like, you know, people say things like, you know, thou hast not a key to use when you try to open a door. Um, I just think that's funny. I don't like, and this is something that I know you didn't like about like Shadowgate and Maniac Mansion, the, like the menu system, like having to select stairs from a menu to walk up or down stairs or select yeah. door to open a door um, was a little annoying. Like I would much rather just like tap A to open the door or just walk right. up to the stairs to walk up the stairs. Um, that was annoying. I, I thought the the combat was a little weird. 
I don't yeah. know. It felt a little weird because the way they explain what's happening and stuff, it's, I don't know, it was a little odd. Yeah. And I think maybe some of that is a uh, language barrier. Um, although I don't think, yeah, like, um, yeah, you know, we could talk about Castlevania 2 a few weeks ago. Like there's nothing on that level in this. Nothing is that badly translated. But there's like, if you want to run away in a fight and you select run, the text is, uh, you know, Pat started to run away. It's like, well, and then and then succeeded. But that's that's all it would say is started to run away, and then it would go back to the overworld. It's like, oh, I guess I guess I made it, <laughs> rather than saying <laughs> Pat ran away. Um, sometimes you would get stopped and be like, started to run away, but his way is blocked. But it just that just feels like something that was like somebody just didn't catch that when they were translating it. Um, I loved the town music. I thought the oh, town yeah. music was so charming in those first couple villages. Yeah, the music was great. I mean, this game, I'm just going to say, it, I think it's a well-polished Final Fantasy. I think it's a little bit of the same game as we played last week, just better. I think it was yeah. just the... Yeah, I think that's fair. And I, I, it's kind of funny that we we played the both of like these games back to back, and it's crazy how I mean, which one came first? This uh, did. This did. This was eighty nine. Final Fantasy was ninety. Wow. Actually, hold on. Those are the U.S. release dates. Let me check. No, nope, still came out first. Huh. So yeah, this came out. In Japan in 86, in the States in 89, Final Fantasy came out in Japan in 87, and then here in 90. Wow. So I think this one... This is a better game. Final Fan- it's, a it's a better, better game. Yeah, I think it's a better game, but I think Final Fantasy took out things from this game and made it simple. Yeah, I can see that. It's a little more accessible. It's more... Ex- exactly. That's what I wanted to say. It's more accessible to players. Yeah. Because in Dragon in Dragon Quest, you only have you're technically one character, right? Yeah, there's no instead party. of yeah, there's no party. So basically, you're you're all you're the fighter, you're the mage, you're the <laughs> right. Wow, in Final Fantasy, they split it up. So yeah, I guess this is why this game feels a little better because you know you're not the. Uh, what do you call it? I guess you're not dealing with a lot since you're same you're the same character. Like, right. Oh, yeah, There's no like magic. you don't have to worry about yeah. managing the party's health or anything. You just have to keep an eye on your own. Um, and right. then starting at level three, you've got a heal spell, so that makes that so much easier. Um, I do have a it's not a quote, but it's a reference that uh Shigeru Miyamoto um said that this game changed the nature of video game development by placing an emphasis on writing, which I will definitely like, you know. This, I would say this more so than Final Fantasy is just kind of a well-written game. The The dialogue is all like the, the NPCs give you helpful information. Um, it's, I don't know, it's just the, the world is, is laid out really well. It's well-written. I just, there's, uh, future games take this and run with it and make it better. Uh, but this is still still a super fun game other than it has a really really high encounter rate yeah i found myself fighting so many times i didn't go back and count i meant to uh, and honestly it may be worse in four but i just i spent i feel like i spent probably three quarters of the of the game fighting just trying to walk and then mm-hmm. it's like oh my god yeah <laughs> And honestly, I didn't care for, I like the town music, but I didn't care for the, like, the battle theme. Like, Final Fantasy always had that, like, a really good, like, the Final Fantasy VII battle theme. The, like, dun 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 Like, that's, that's great, like, get you pumped up battle music. I didn't feel like the, like, you know, you've encountered us, red slime. The music that plays behind that was, you know all that great it wasn't as iconic as final fantasy yeah it is funny it's funny that this game always like people always talk dragon warrior final fantasy if you're into rpgs so it's very funny that now we're doing it we're like yeah (laughs) 
Yeah, didn't do it on purpose doing these back to back, but it is, uh, this is kind of our contribution to that ages old debate. Um, I really didn't like the theme in the dungeons, like when you're like, you have to light a torch and walk around. That felt like, um, it almost kind of felt like a mistake. Like they had like used two different audio tracks and they were like, we're supposed to layer on top of each other, but one of them was like off by a beat. Because the music comes across like really, I'm not a, a music guy, but I think discordant is the word that I'm looking for, where like it just like it sounds like it's clashing with itself, uh, and was just kind of unsettling. I think that was the point, though. I think you were supposed to be unsettled in a cave. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Because, Although you know, Shadowgate was able to do that, but without the like, it didn't sound painful. But again, maybe that's just my own musical taste. That I just didn't, <laughs> didn't like it. Well, hey, man. It's just like water levels. Cave levels are also a pain in the butt, too. That's so it's true. Like... That's very fair. <laughs> very, very fair. Uh, when I think of cave, I always think of Pokemon Red and Blue, man. <laughs> God, when you go to caves and you have to fight nothing but Zubats. Uh, uh, it's the worst. <laughs> And hoping you have flash and you have to use it on the stupid like Pokemon. <laughs> good times, guys. Good times. Sounds or you have a like Pokemon it. that a Pokemon that just uses HMs. You, you never played Red and Blue, right? I started it once. Uh, actually, when I first got my emulator, I was like, I should see what all the fuss is about. I was like, oh, there is way too much going on here. I am not in a mental place to do this. <laughs> and uh, I put it away. I'm like, I will come back to this. And then that was like three years ago and haven't come back to it. So Someday I'll play early, it. Was when, the, it was whenever uh, Pokemon Go got really big. I was like, oh, I'm going to go uh, back to like it. the origins of Pokemon Go. Yeah. <laughs> so the the origins are in mean, uh, in, in Pokemon Red and Blue. There are these moves called hidden moves, right? Okay. And you get you get them. So I like you get them to to move on in the story. So like one of them is cut, and you could cut branches now to go to the next. Oh, okay. Town or 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 surf. Now you could swim in water to get to the next place. The problem with these moves is uh, they can't really once you once you put in a Pokemon, they can't really be deleted from that Pokemon. Hmm. And the moves were good, were okay, but not great. So what would you do is you would get a random Pokemon and you just put all of them in that Pokemon, oh. and that would just be your your hidden move. <laughs> It'd be your, your Swiss Army knife. <laughs> yeah, come here, Magikarp. I need you to open this thing for me. <laughs> pretty much so yeah I don't know why we're talking about hidden moves but I just just to get the joke across about it <laughs> yeah. well I, I, I followed the train of thought cave battles yeah. Zubat hidden moves yeah so definitely uh, not as big a tangent as we have been on in the past on the show that is true that is true alright man how so, far did we go yep yeah, take it away Rhino Who made it for them? Who made it for them? So, Rad Racer. I know you mentioned you didn't beat it again this time. How far did did you make it? Man, I think I only made it to like the fourth race. Oh, is that all? Just the fourth one? Because I died on the second one again. I have still I died, never seen I level actually, three. Yeah, I, I did. Like level three was a little difficult this time. I don't know what I was on the first time I played this game. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, level four. Was that when you were like you're just getting over being sick and you had all the and you were on meds? Maybe no, like, was, that was later. Yeah, yeah, that was later. Yeah, yeah. That was in September-ish. Oh, okay. And we, we didn't play... We played this in July, right? We played it in July. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. trying to make the timeline match up. Like, maybe that is why you were able to do it. <laughs> no. No. Wasn't that. I don't, I don't have no idea. 
honestly, I, I truly believe it was because I was at home. We didn't have a job at the time because we, well, we were all. Uh huh. Well, you, you were know. furloughed and I was laid yeah, I was off. furloughed, yeah. So I didn't have really think about anything else. And I just like, let's do this. <laughs> Zone out and drive eight bit cars for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I mean, not to spoil what game is winning, but it's pretty clear which game is winning. I'm excited to like, uh, to never play this again. <laughs> In all honesty. Uh, Dragon Warrior. This is going to be a hard one to judge. Um, yeah. RPGs always are. Um, I had made it to level six. Okay. Um, and I had made it to the town of Cole, which is oh, okay. where you find the fairy flute except I couldn't find the fairy flute because I couldn't get anybody to tell me where the fairy flute was. Um, but yeah, so I had gone, I had like a, a bronze sword, a brass, some kind of sword and a shield and leather armor. I was, I had done a lot of grinding, just not knowing where I, where I was going. Um, right. But yeah, I hadn't made a ton of story progress. I had found the, um, the tablet with the information, uh, you know, Erdrich and thou art my descendant, that thing. Um, and I found the old man protecting what I'm assuming is one of the three items that you're supposed to have before you can go and fight the dragon lord. Uh, but yeah. he wouldn't let me have it unless I brought him a silver harp, um, which I hadn't found. I think that's after we get the, the thing you were looking for. Because I... You actually beat me. I was at level five searching for the flute. Oh, very oh, nice. So you made it, it to the, like the, the, the square of water that cures rheumatism yeah. or whatever it is. But, yeah. So it's funny that you said that we were talking before the podcast. I was like, damn, that's where I got. I wonder if you beat it. If you <laughs> it. Nope. But I guess you leveled up. You grinded more than I did. I did a little more grinding. <laughs> yeah. I, I spent it. a big chunk of the about the middle of the two hours really not knowing what i was supposed to be doing so i was just going around like just picking fight with good picking fights with ghosts and magicians and just because i really wanted to like up my my uh, weapons and my armor and in that second town the one that where you go north and then follow the coast uh, the name of the town escapes me, and I'm trying to find yeah. it in this. Uh, Garenham? Yeah, Garenham. Um, so they had like way better weapons and armor there than the first town did. So it's like, okay, well, I'm because like the magicians give you, I think, like 11 gold every time you kill one. So I was just like walking around trying to find magicians to kill so that I could rack up gold to go and buy stuff. And I, along the way, I leveled up five times oh dang <laughs> yeah look at that the streak is broken yeah I'm you got me man still, I was... still well behind you've made it further in 43 games to my 37 but catching but yeah up. like i was gonna say these these role play games are kind of hard in general in the NES because you just don't know where to go. I yeah. al always like, where do we go? Mm -hmm. and I guess that's the point. Like you're supposed to just find your way, but right. yeah, it's really frustrating. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's crazy. I guess that's bad on us. I guess that now games really kind of tell you where to go mm -hmm. instead of discovering yourself. But, yeah, it is like, it's funny to go from like Dragon Warrior and just wandering aimlessly for two hours to like, you know, when we're done recording, I'll, you know, make sure all the audio files and stuff work before I start editing in the morning. But um, I'll go downstairs and play Witcher 3 and like, I'll talk to somebody and they'll be like, you know, okay, I need you to go talk to this guy. And then just a yellow circle will show up on my map telling me exactly where that person is. Like, oh, okay. 
well, I guess I'll just fast travel to that town on the other side of the map and go to that exact dot to find that person. Yeah. It's a little, little more handholdy now, but I'm... Yeah, a little I'm bit. Okay I, I, I just, like, realized that just now, like, man, you're... Like, I, 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 I hate the not knowing where to go, but at the same time, it's like, man, now games just hold our hands a lot, or... Mm -hmm. Some games. I yeah. mean, there's some like I've been playing Immortal Phoenix Rising, and they really don't tell you where to go. They have icons, but yeah, it's not like uh, like it's not like a GTA they, or a Red Dead, right? Or I mean, Witcher they do show you like here's your main mission, like this is to go to finish the story and stuff, but all the other things are randomly. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Breath of the Wild too. That's Breath exactly the, the comparison yeah. I was going to make. Is really if you you know broad strokes what you're supposed to be doing, but you can just right. explore the world. And if you wind up in a situation where you're not strong enough, you're just going to die. And uh, yeah. that happened to me a couple of times <laughs> playing Dragon <laughs> Warrior. I would cross a bridge and then be like, "Ooh, I am not ready for you, Scorpion." <laughs> yeah, level fifteen Scorpion or whatever. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Like what? Oh, okay. Yeah, Pat Got attacked, it. did one hit point of damage. Scorpion attacked, does 17 hits of damage. Like, uh-oh. <laughs> Pat started to run away. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, I'll get to you later. Yep. And so, yeah, man, Dragon that. Warrior. Dragon Warrior is definitely our winner this week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's... Uh... Uh, that's a that's a big 10-4 on that. 57% um, <laughs> of our online vote also went to Dragon Warrior. This was a really close one. That's Wow. That's, 50, uh, hey, Rad... Uh, right, Rad right, Racer. I keep wanting to call it Ridge Racer. I, it is definitely not that Ridge Racer at all. <laughs> Ridge Racer is the PlayStation 1 classic, but... Yes. Anyway... <laughs> It it looks great. Like I I bet people played this game and when they were young it was like this is the car game because yeah. it does feel like the car game of this generation. Yeah, totally. It is like I mean I feel like in July we compared it to like Forza and um, yeah Gran Turismo. Uh, Gran Turismo, yeah. Um, yeah. It is. It's very much that for for that era. Um, so the winner. We actually, this is the first time that we've known what game it's going to face in the next round. Dragon Warrior is going to be taking on the aforementioned Castlevania II, Simon's Quest. Um, oh. So fortunately, we will be dealing with the very helpful NPCs in Dragon Warrior, uh, in addition <laughs> to the very unhelpful NPCs in Castlevania II. Um, we did get uh, another note from uh, from our old friend Ryan O, who asks which sidekick deserves its own solo game. Um, and I'm assuming he means aside from the ones that already exist, like you know Luigi's Mansion and right. Diddy's Conquest and Diddy Kong Racing and stuff. Um, I got one. What you got? Either Falco. Or just the other members of Star Fox. Okay. Yeah, that'd I mean, be interesting. That would be awesome. <laughs> like, see the story of it's a barrel roll. Oh, I forgot his name. Right. <laughs> yeah, but Slippy <laughs> learns how to do a barrel roll and he's just yeah. so excited he has to tell everybody. Like, I want to know his story. I want to know how he he got, you know, to be in the group and why Falco is jealous of Fox and I don't yeah. know. I think that would be neat. That would be cool. Um, and it may be recency bias because I'm playing Witcher 3 currently, but I would like to see a spinoff game about the Bloody Baron, like what his life was Ooh, like yeah. um, before he came to settle at uh, Crow's Nest. Is that what the place is called? Yes. Uh, he's just a you know, fascinating character, and his, his uh, side quest has been really interesting. Or I guess it's a main quest at this point now. Um, oh man, there's just so many. Like, yeah, I thought about Sully story from Uncharted. Oh man, I would tell you, like the flashback <laughs> scenes in is it three? Or there's it's three, three. Yeah. yeah, like I would play a whole game of young Sully mentoring Nate. Um, right, 
how cool would that be? You got the Obi Wan Anakin thing going. And I, I mean, I think we're getting the movie. That's what Uncharted movie is going to be, pretty much. But <laughs> I would have loved, you know, Naughty Dog to knock it out. Instead it still of still would have been a really good game. Hollywood, because um, I don't know if they're going to do a great job, but we'll see. Yeah, and I guess now that I think about it. Bloody Baron isn't really a sidekick, even though he does accompany you on a couple of your missions. Right, he's the, he's the the Witcher, the first level, right? That helps you with. No, he's the one he's the guy whose that... daughter and wife ran off after oh, okay. a drunken yeah. fight, and then the wife has gone and joined the crones, and the daughter has joined the rebellion, and he's gotcha. just a angry drunk trying to make up for being a horrible guy. <laughs> uh, at least that's how far I am. I'm not sure, you know, if there is a full redemption arc for him, but um, but he's, he's not really a sidekick, even though he does kind of accompany you on a couple of missions. So, yeah, so I don't know that I've got... Um, there's just a lot. There's, there's a lot. There's um, like a lot of franchises. I'm like, all right. In Resident Evil, I would love to see a, like an Ada Wong solo game Ooh, I think yeah. that would be awesome that would be cool but this the, i don't know if these are i mean they're not sidekicks they're more like side characters, characters rather than sidekicks right because so there aren't sidekicks like i mean solely it's a sidekick so, so i would i would 100 percent consider solely yeah. a sidekick um falco uh, they're technically sidekicks yeah i mean yeah they're uh they're wingmen uh, video game. I'm I'm just googling video game sidekicks because I'm I'm kind of racking my brain. It's a very good question. Specific. Oh, tails. Didn't think about tail. I, oh, I don't yeah. know that I would. Oh no, there's an obvious answer that I've just that we've both been totally overlooking. The weighted companion cube. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I would a hundred percent play a, a game like a. Um, uh, what is Portal? it? There was a PSN game where you're like in a box and you're like trying to roll it, uh, like Twerkel or something. Um, but like at that, but you're the companion cube. That was mostly a joke. But or Lydia from Skyrim, Kazooie. Would a Cortana game be interesting? I think so. I'm not sure how playing as an AI would work, but. Or a whole game where you're the dog from Fable. Clank. Ooh, Navi. No, thank yeah. you. Oh, Proto Man. Pro yeah, that's a good one. There's so many. That's a good question. Yeah. There's so many you can make that deserves it. Oh, Rhino. What's your psyche? I don't really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Mass Effect has a ton of great ones. Oh, my God. Legion and Ashley and... Uh, Freaking Garrus. Garrus, yeah. Like, that's the... That, that alone will sell you hundreds of copies. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, Garrus might be the right answer. Yeah. Not that there's oh, yeah, the right answer, but, like... His backstory is, playing through before before he comes across Shepard. Yeah. That and Thane. I would love I love Thane so much. So so many. Yeah. Really, really, really good question, Ryan. Yep. Um, so yeah, and I hope we get your answer like we did with the uh uh brutal legend Elvis impersonator uh game that I still just have so many questions about. <laughs> uh, um, next week, we will be revisiting the Dragon Warrior franchise when the number 39 seed Dragon Warrior 4, excuse me, I have the hiccups. I'm going to start that over again. Next week, we will continue with the Dragon Warrior franchise as the number 39 seed Dragon Warrior 4 takes on number 26 Metal Gear uh, in another second round matchup. 
Uh, you can see the full bracket at challenge.com slash kings of consoles. Challenge is spelled like challenge, but with an O where the first E would normally be, C-H-A-L-L-O-N-G-E. Uh, we have our full bracket posted there. We always update it every week with the previous week's result. So now you should see uh, that Final Fantasy has advanced past... Uh, uh, why am I blanking on that? We literally just played it. Ghosts and Goblins. Ghosts and Goblins. Yes. Yeah, Ghosts and Goblins. That happened to me last week, too, when I couldn't remember Super C. Um, <laughs> that uh, That's what Castlevania beat. Hey, what, once they lose, they're out of our memory. That's <laughs> right. That's right. We gotta gotta make room for for more new games. I got a whole Kojima <laughs> mythology. I gotta cram in there next week with Metal Gear stuff. Oh man, I am Fox so Hound and Solid Snake and Big Boss. So and... First time I'm ever playing this, so this is gonna be exciting. It's wild. I did. I I just played it uh, Monday on the Twitch channel, twitchtv slash Kings of Consoles. Uh, and or last Monday, sorry. And it was, uh, it's good. It's really hard. It's really frustrating. But uh, you can definitely tell, like, the elements were there from the beginning. He just, you know, as the technology advanced, he was able to, you know, take that story and turn it into, you know, what the Metal Gear Solid series is now, um, or was. Stupid Konami, right? Um, Hopefully it comes back one day. But. Hopefully they, they give up on their dream of making pachinko machines and go back to, you know, make nice with Kojima and... Yeah, this, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. <laughs> that's not going to happen. They're making so much money off those machines. <laughs> yeah. But a boy can dream. Um, and if you want to help fund that dream, boys and girls, <laughs> uh, you can... <laughs> And buy us a cup of coffee. Good segue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, KO-FI.com slash Kings of Consoles. Uh, if you want to buy us a cup of coffee or, you know, a new computer or something, feel free. You can just uh, contribute financially there. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Kings of Consoles. You can email us, kingsofconsolespod at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter. We are at Kings of Consoles there. I am at Loopy Date is my personal handle. And I'm at Ricky G N7. Hey, look at that. First try. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so next week, Dragon Warrior 4, Metal Gear, good stuff. And we are we're coming in for a landing here in February, which means we are very, very close to Super March EO, which is going to be a, uh, a fun <laughs> month of Mario games. Uh, March EO, good job, Marchio. man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we'll revisit Mega Man May uh, when May comes around. Oh, and even before the week after we play Metal Gear and Dragon Warrior 4, we've got Punch Out and Rescue Rangers. And there's some really good stuff coming up. Uh, to yep. you know, wash the taste of Rad Racer out of our mouths. So I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so <All> yeah, right. <laughs> rate, review, subscribe. We are please. Uh, you know, you can find us all the the regular podcast places wherever you're listening now, or maybe you prefer Apple Podcasts or Spotify or iHeartRadio or Apple po- or I said Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music or Google Podcasts or Spotify. Podbean. We got we got so many options. Just uh, just check us out, rate, review, subscribe, recommend us to your friends because maybe they'll like it. Uh, although maybe if they don't know who Miyamoto is, maybe you know send them some Wikipedia links first because um, we do we do <laughs> name drop uh, on this show occasionally. Uh, but yeah, join us next week for another very fun episode as we get really really close to the halfway point of this tournament, which seems crazy. Uh, we're also closing in on a year uh, of doing this. So, yeah, we're yeah. almost there, man. Almost there. All that's still to come. Uh, and so until next week, play old games. Play old games, everyone. Bye, right, everybody. Kings of Consoles is recorded in Nashville and Orlando and is produced and edited by me, Ed Uli. Thanks to Captain Portal for our theme song, intro for a non-existent video game, which can be found at freemusicarchive.org. And the music and sound effects from this week's games can be found with a quick Google search. The opinions expressed in this and every episode are our own, and we are in no way sponsored by or affiliated with Nintendo. We're just big fans.